So the challenge and the goal with these exercises comes down to tension biasing. Are you feeling this where you want to feel it? Or is it that same familiar tension in the neck and the shoulder that you're always feeling? So we are going to strategically use a base position that helps us get a better shoulder blade connection to the rib cage that should keep this out of our neck. Quadruped is one of my go-tos for tricky shoulders. First thing, quadruped, you have so much grounding through your feet, through your shins, through your knees, through your hands. You get a better global pattern of stability with more grounding. You also have an easier setup for controlling your core without getting those compensations in your spine and your rib cage. We are gonna target our right hand, but we're gonna take advantage of what's going on over on our left side. This closed chain position is beautiful for a serratus push. Serratus push comes from here. It brings the shoulder blade forward, but it brings the ribs back. Not rounding, just back so that that core can get connected. Now, whenever we play with serratus and that forward push, I also want you breathing into the rib cage under your shoulder blade and pushing the rib cage back on that breath in, into the shoulder blade. We can also take advantage of our hand. This is a closed chain position. Distal support affects proximal stability. So I want the whole hand pressing into the ground. Make sure you don't roll out onto the pinky. Now you're set. That serratus push, breathing into the shoulder blade, elongated spine, core is on. The first challenge is a Y or a trap raise, and then we're gonna bring it into a swimmer's hover. Keep the neck long, keep that left hand pressing into the ground, ribs are controlled, elbow is high, and then come on back out, and then come back down. If you're doing well there, you can add some resistance using a band. I know everyone's gonna ask about this. These are arm pro bands or they're J bands, or you can use the CLX continuous loop tubing from TheraBand. But the idea is if you make a fist developmentally, this goes with that position. If we can do a nice open hand, it goes with this position. So if you're really concerned about shoulder blade stability and you're doing shoulder blade exercises, these are a great investment. You can also do an I, you can do a T, you can do a swimmer's hover. So in this position, you're going to pull your shoulder blade back on the right. You're gonna lift your elbow high. You're gonna lift your whole hand off of your spine, check for compensations. You're gonna hinge out, scraping the ceiling. You're gonna turn your thumb up to the sky, external rotation, and scrape the ceiling until you come up to that Y position. Lengthen your neck, check your ribs, press the left hand into the ground, and then hinge in, not touching your head. Keep the elbow high, the neck long, good. And then relaxing down, and you can retrace. Elbow up, hand off out to your Y, then thumb turns down, coming all the way down to your 45 and then hinging in, don't touch your back and relax it down. You could do a shoulder car, so cutting straight up into elevation, turn your thumb down, internal rotation, and then continue rotating in that direction as you come up to the ceiling, up to the ceiling, up to the ceiling, and then coming to the point where the back of your hand rests on your hip. Fix your shoulder blade, your left arm, and then reach your thumb up to the sky. When you can't go any further, turn your thumb down to the floor, up again, external rotation, and then scraping the ceiling, coming up, clearing your ear, and down to the floor. You could do a row. Remember, this is about shoulder blades. Press the left one in, pull the right one back. Face pull. Add a weight if you want. 
you could do a Cuban rotation. So from here, you are going to pull your elbow up to the ceiling. The back of your hand comes up to the ceiling. Let it come back down and release. You can progress this by coming into a half kneeling position. Nail this position, drive that knee into the ground, organize your pelvis, core is on. Make sure hips are level and then pushing into the wall as much as you need to get a nice activation of shoulder blade muscles and up you go into your Y. From there, you can take it into swimmers hover, the people who struggle with this the most are the people with a flat back. We tend to value flat backs in our society, but the truth is you first need to get a connection of your shoulder blade on your rib cage or you'll never get out of these muscles. Hi there, I'm Michelle from Movement 101. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you would like more content like this, go down to the first link in the description below. And of course, to get this information out there, it does help to click like, hit subscribe, and make a comment. And let's make sure your body is built to last. Thanks for watching.